As the Chancellor was today being urged to explain how he'll make £12 billion of welfare cuts announced in his budget, hundreds of people were on the streets in the south complaining about the existing system. The union Unite organised marches across the region. The government has said that sanctions are only used as a last resort for a tiny minority. Benefit sanctions can be used for those on job seekers allowance and the employment and support allowance. Payments can be stopped for failing to keep appointments or not demonstrating availability for work. And benefits can be withdrawn for four weeks or as much as three years. Ben Moore reports. If you've got no money, how do you eat? A mock trial of the benefit system drew the crowds in Southampton. I arrest you. But after they've gone, it's people like Dan Baldwin who have to carry on and sign on. He used to work in construction, but was laid off three years ago. Last year, he was sanctioned for six months. There's no money whatsoever, all cut off, and you're still expected to go in and sign on every week and still search for jobs and go to job interviews, even though you've got no income whatsoever. Dan says he was told to apply for jobs hundreds of miles away in Exeter and London. He says he did, but was sanctioned anyway. I managed to get some money from charities, eventually sold my car and other odds and ends that I had. And that's how I had to survive for six months. Unite fought to get the decision overturned. We shouldn't be living in a punishment state like this. We're human beings. We respond to compassion, to praise. I've actually got a homeless gentleman here in Salisbury who's lost absolutely everything because of sanctions. Today, protesters called on the government to stop what they call grotesque cruelty that seems to be a postcode lottery. The Test Valley, Southampton and Fareham are amongst the most heavily sanctioned areas of the UK. More than one in ten job seekers have had payments stopped. The Department for Work and Pensions says that sanctions are only used as a last resort and then in a minority of cases. It says the number of sanctions has actually gone down over the past year. Dan's still looking for work and his benefits have been reinstated. But he says it's not easy living in the shadow of sanctions. Ben Moore, BBC South Today. Now, we asked the Department for Work and Pensions for an interview. They declined, but a spokesman did say it's only right that claimants do all they can to look for work in return for benefit payments. People are expected to look for work in a travel-to-work area, which is one and a half hours each way using public transport. They went on to say there are no targets for sanctions. But that's not something one former benefits advisor turned whistleblower agrees with. We've withheld his identity for legal reasons. We were encouraged to adopt an approach to everybody that came in and made a claim for benefit. The same approach, target them, set them up to fail, sanction them, make life difficult for them. In fact, one of my managers told me to agitate the customer. Earlier, I spoke to Dr David Webster, an expert on unemployment and benefits from the University of Glasgow, and I asked him what percentage of claimants for job seekers allowance are sanctioned. The latest figures are that of all the people who claimed JSA in the uh, 12, latest 12 months, um, almost one in five were sanctioned. Shouldn't people be pushed a bit harder back into work, though? Well. All the evidence is that the overwhelming majority of claimants want to get back to work. The trouble about the sanctions regime is that it creates artificial hurdles for people to get over and then trips them up. And very often that is quite destructive to their efforts to find work. And the sort of thing that you get happening is that uh, people go into the job centre, they say they looked for 30 jobs, they could only find 29. And then the uh, official says, aha, I looked up on the computer system and I found over 30 jobs you could have applied for. But of course the fact that he did doesn't mean that the claimant would necessarily have done so. If somebody is sanctioned though, there is an appeals process, isn't there? Yes, unfortunately very few people use it. Uh, only about a third of sanctioned JSA claimants actually make any sort of appeal. And the proportion who actually get to an independent tribunal has fallen now to one in 1,000. Is there any evidence that some people are being disproportionately penalised? Uh, yes. Uh, young people 
are twice as likely to be sanctioned as everybody else. That's uh, young people aged 18 to 24. Um, and also people with vulnerabilities, such as people with mental health issues and so on. They're at particular risk, and many of the voluntary organizations providing services to those vulnerable, group, vulnerable groups have been complaining in recent years about the pressure that's being put on their uh, service users and about the difficulties that that is creating both for the service users and for them. Dr. David Webster, thank you.